Good morning and welcome to this uh, a bit of a wet vegan Friday. It's raining here, I don't know what it's doing in your neck of the woods, but it's a uh, cold, wet and windy and it's winter's here, isn't it? I'm it's sure a bit Wayne will tell us it's not wet and oh, windy over there. I bet he's got some glorious sunshine over there in Sydney. So welcome to Vegan Friday. I doubt it. Why not? Is he in, not in Sydney? Well, it, it's um, like it, oh, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> As you can tell, I've got my trusty sidekick with me. The annoying, I mean the wonderful Simon. <laughs> <laughs> how do I do? How do I go a day without him in the kitchen? I, I don't, just no, don't can, know. Karen, how do you do it? <laughs> so I'm going to let Simon shout a few hellos. That when he finds the live on the iPad. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so good morning to Lynn Woodward. First hello this morning. Hello, Lynn. Um, good morning, Louisa and Paul Baker. Paul Wayne is uh, roasting hot. You're roasting hot. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a plane, no we can't, can we? <laughs> and it's raining in Burnley. Yeah, no, it's, that, it's that just, is not I think, surprising. I think we're about nine degrees here. It is a bit chilly now. It's, uh, it's getting to winter woolly weather. So today, on Vegan Friday, I'm going to have a bit of a mismatch day. Mismatch? Mismatch. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do you some lovely... I'm going to go over the vegan fruit scones again, because I do love a scone or a scone however you want to pronounce it, I love a scone and there's nothing better than I've, they adapted it to do a vegan fruit scone. The recipe is on the website because I did do them back in the summer when we was having high teas so the recipe is there but you know what it's nice to go over old recipes so that any of you new ones there can see it all done again and people were talking about vegan treats. Well here we go I'm going to make some, I've just got some marzipan which is vegan, the marzipan, and I'm gonna, I've just done them into a nice little shapes in a mould and I've covered them in the Calibo dark chocolate. So that is your vegan treats there. I'm just getting that because it was black on black, you couldn't really see it there. And then these ones here, I've got a couple of different sorts. I've done vegan peppermint creams. Now, who likes like an after eight, after, after the dinner, especially Christmas dinner, you like a nice after eight? Well, I've done some vegan peppermint creams. So it's like more like a vegan fondant in case in a lovely dark chocolate. And then I just get my little palette knife here. So there you go, it's a, a, a nice crisp chocolate and it's a fondant inside. So it's a lovely minty fondant and because it's broken now I'm going to give it Simon to try and he will, t ask, he will actually tell you what it tastes like. <laughs> he's our guinea pig. <laughs> so he's going to try that broken one for me. But my husband was trying them last night because I did these at home last night to make sure they were, they were actually taste it. And he said, mmm, mm, that's delicious. Guys. He says, I really mm. like it. <laughs> Don't be so sarcastic. You know, it's terrible. So I'm going to do some vegan peppermint creams as well. So we're going to put those over there. Because once you've done the uh, marzipan shapes and you've made the peppermint cream shape, you have to sort of chill them in the freezer for around about half an hour so that they firm up before we can dip them in the chocolate. So I'm going to make first the uh, peppermint cream fondant, get that shaped, whip it in the freezer, then do the marzipan, whip that in the freezer, and then I can make the vegan scones, and while the vegan scones are in the fridge chilling, we'll get the other bits out of the freezer to dip in the chocolate. I'm and then, confused. Well, you won't be, you will follow me as we go along. So we're just going to have a bit of a lovely play today. Just let me get my clock. Yeah, I hope you're not expecting me to remember any of that, what you're supposed to be doing at any particular time. No, I'll just let you know, because he's, he can't multitask, remember that. So thank you for doing the comments, can't Simon. Do any more and if any of you lovely ladies and gents on there, if you see any questions that Simon hasn't answered, if you could answer them for me, I would be very, very grateful. But I do go through the lives at the end and I will try and answer as many questions as I can that haven't been answered for you. Both recipes that I'm doing today, the vegan peppermint creams and the vegan fruit scones, is on the website. So you can get them there by going to... <laughs> going to... <laughs> 
there we go. You see, it's very slow, isn't it? So we're going to Sugar and Crumbs, mixing it up. Co. Uk, and you can find all the recipes there. So let's get my bowl to do. We don't need a mixer for any of these recipes. Just get this one out here. I've only done it. I've only done it once, so you know I just have to check. I'm using 360 grams. And remember, if you don't want to make a few, halve your mixture. You can halve your mixture. I made last night, I think it was worked out, I made around 10 and I'd halve the mixture. But I made a couple of different sizes so you could see some done in a, in a mould, some were done just by flattening your hand. So I've, I've got about 10 out of it. So I'm doing a full mixture now to show you. And then if you want to, you can always halve your mixture. 360 grams and I'm using velvet vanilla natural flavoured icing sugar. Going into there. I have got Morrison's, or the place that I found it at the moment, it's the vegan condensed milk. It says vegan in big letters. Yeah, it's Nestle though, isn't it? It's the Nestle Carnation, yeah. yeah. But, and that's the colour of it. So, no, it, if you open the tin, like we usually expect a nice creamy white mixture there, it's actually like a caramelly colour. So, as you could see from the peppermint cream, it didn't detract from the colour. The peppermint creams still looked white. So, don't be alarmed like I was last night when I did the tin and I found that colour. It's perfectly fine. So, that is 120 mils of vegan condensed cream going in there. It also makes a lovely fudge this but I did do the fudge but it is too it's a lot of stirring like five minutes here and ten minutes there and just be a lot to do on the screen just stirring the bowl I just don't think you'd want to stand there and just watch me stir the bowl for ten minutes and also into this then we're doing two teaspoons of peppermint essence and I've got this it's American peppermint extract that I'm using a teaspoon's gone AWOL. Found it. Here we go, two teaspoons of peppermint essence. Now if you want it a little bit more pepperminty, which these are actually alright, you could actually put a little bit more in if you wanted to. Now we're going to start by just using the spatula to mix it together but you will have to get your hand and I don't know why I've left my watch on there we go I'll put my watch over there um, there we go but you will have to get your hands in but it doesn't become sticky it becomes a nice actually firm ball I'm just going to put this out of the way a little bit because I want to be able to get onto the board. Here we go. Like that. And then put your hand in. Just use the one hand. And just gently squeeze it all together. I suppose if you wanted to, you could try and use your mixer for this if you didn't want to put your hand in there. But I found it quite satisfying last night. Just uh, squeezing the mixture. Now just take because it, it feels quite dry though, so you're not going to get all the bits together. But it does come into a lovely firm peppermint fondant ball. Just takes a bit of, a bit of grabbing together. Now onto the board and we're going to bring it all together into so you can get both hands in now oops sliding away there get both hands in and make this lovely can you smell that Simon mm. no you can't smell the pepper in essence there eh? wow you need to be closer clearly I'm fine two oh. meters away So you see, it's coming together. It does feel like it's crumbly, but you just have to work it. And then it's the warmth of your hands as well with the icing sugar and the work fondant. It, Karen, work and it. working it. But it's Friday. 
You've had a long week. <laughs> Put a bit of effort in there. Uh, I know. I think you're slacking. Oh, tell me about it. Let me just grab this bit into a ball, then I can add that ball to the other ball. And this is why once you've made the balls, you have to chill them so that they're all really nice and firm together before you dip it into the chocolate, because then the chocolate keeps it all encased together. No, everybody's with me on that. They can't smell it. <laughs> I can let you lot off, but I'm not letting him off. There we go. I'm going to cut it into two balls now because I just found it a little bit too much for me, my hands just to get hold of one ball. So it's not sticky, it is firm and that's why you have to keep working it. So yeah, if you want to use a mixer you could do, but you might just find that it might just crumb in the mixture. It might not just come together as much as when you have to work it with your hands. I don't want to waste it. I'm just gathering it all up. Work it, girls. Work it. Now we're just going to divide this into evenly sized pieces. Now it depends on how big you want your peppermint creams to be. You can have the peppermint creams as, um, as a disc, which is like that. Or you could use a mould if you wanted to. Oops, that's the wrong one. Use a mould and you could have them like that in a mould. It's up to you how you want to do it. But the discs are quite nice because when you arrange them on a tray on your dinner table, people can just take the one and they actually look, they look nice. So that's worked. That's worked. In doesn't matter, I've got three balls because I'm just going to make them all into even I'm going to make them into even sizes anyway here we go let's move that bit out of the way there so you're just going to break it off you know you try and cut it and you'll find that it will crumble again so you're just taking little pieces <laughs> everybody's laughing Karen I don't know what they're laughing at <laughs> I'm just going to carry on rolling my peppermint fondant and I'm going to do them yeah. into you carry on regardless I'm carrying on regardless it's Friday it's the weekend <laughs> how long will these keep for these will keep in the fridge you have to keep them in the fridge it's best to keep them in the fridge I don't know if it's a condensed milk but it's uh, so they keep nice and firm in the fridge these will keep if, if you can manage them they would uh, I would say they would keep two or three weeks in the fridge depends on I've not tried because I only made them yesterday but um, I've kept them in the fridge today and they are absolutely fine so I would say it two to three weeks in your fridge I'm just going to see I've got a little a little mold as well I didn't bring it with, oh I did bring it with me here we go so it's just like some little chocolate these are just chocolate molds that I got off that uh, well-known shopping set that I'm always using. So just so when you put it into there, you can even put your little bits in there because once it's all firmed up, it will all be together. Debbie says you've got oddballs. <laughs> I know because I'm doing this now, and then I'm going to. <laughs> you behave yourself, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> you're all terrible <laughs> terrible you are you lead me astray here we go we've, we've got to have a laugh haven't we like oh, this, absolutely. with all this going on absolutely <laughs> if you can't have a laugh now I mean we have to laugh and it's yeah. it's coming up to Christmas and it's a festive and I got in the car this morning to come to work and what's on the radio Ha have decided to play a whole hour of Christmas tunes oh, and I thought brilliant. oh no it's still November stop it <laughs> <laughs> it gets me in the Christmas spirit too much and then I've got too many days to go you can't keep the can't keep the joy up for that long, can you? Because <laughs> I mean, I do like Christmas. I love Christmas. It's just going to be a bit strange this year. 
as you can see it was a bit of crumbling there but once you've put it into your mold it will firm up and it will come out as one complete piece as you will see very shortly i'm also going to do some little rounds as well so you can see how the how to do the round ones squish it in it's a good workout for the morning girls you good workout and then you can get the little um, candy cases anybody who's doing like um little truffles or you do if you're doing your truffles for christmas and that you'll have sourced your little um sweetie truffle cases already and these fit perfectly in in these molds as well i just got some uh, generic black ones with a thought because they'll go with anything that i do they never get the black ones but you can get any color that you want to so i'm only going to fill this mold and then i'm going to do the rest So as I said, it was 360 grams of icing sugar, 120 mils of um, the vegan condensed milk, and it was two teaspoons of peppermint extract. And that's all that's gone into this, and a lot of hard work, as in your fingers. So I've got those ones in there, so I'm going to put those into the freezer. Put them on my tray first those on that tray there so it moves it out of the way because on that bit there fold it down I'm actually going to just roll out some peppermint so just keep working the more you work it it just molds back into a nice firm dough ball again And I'm going to show you a couple of different sizes. So into a ball, and then you put onto your tray and just flatten it, just flatten it with the palm of your hand. So that's, and you can just swiss it around with your fingers. And you've got a nice round there. So I've got that size. on the tray so you can see I just just to keep it within its round shape now if you wanted to you can actually flatten these with the base of a glass as well that works as well um little base of a tumbler but you don't want to go too I mean you can go as thin as you want but I think you do need to taste the peppermint fondant These are a lovely addition to put onto your table after Christmas dinner as well. They're just like you'd think you're in a restaurant then, don't you? You've got, you're serving coffee and mints afterwards. So you can see it's quite a crumbly mixture, but once you've worked it with your hands, you can get it into... A nice ball and then we will be doing we'll do the scone mixture get the scones into the fridge and then we we'll, can do the um, the marzipan ones and then when the marzipan ones go in the freezer I'll bring the peppermint ones out put the scones in the oven and then we'll dip the marzipan ones sorted Sam is looking at me to say what you're saying what are you doing what, what? <laughs> I am not listening to a word you're saying <laughs> He's lovely, isn't he, eh? Um, Maria is asking, could you roll it out and use a small cutter? It's a bit crumbly. Mm -hmm. I don't honestly think you could... Uh, it's, it's actually, when you look at me now, if I do that, it's actually very crumbly. So I think to roll it out, it would break into pieces. That's why they say it's the warmth of your hands doing it together. But, I mean... Um, I don't know if it'd work if maybe you, if you wanted to roll it out, you could put maybe put another 10 ml of condensed cream into it to make it that little bit um, more wetter. But I just want to you keep it. You want to keep a, a fondant as dry as you can because you don't want it to be very wet. I'm going to take those out and just undo the paper there. Got more than enough. You see, see, we've made quite a lot there out of that one mix. And this paper will be used again because this is when I dip them, I put them back onto this paper. 
What are you laughing at? He's got a smirky smile on his face. One thing I will do is I'll... Can you make them waffle thin? <laughs> waffle thin? Waffle thin. I'm not making them waffle thin. <laughs> Just a waffle thin, mate. I mean... <laughs> Just wonder, you, I suppose you could make them as thin as you wanted to. I mean, if, you, if you're willing to press down with... A, we get a glass and see how thin we can go. You want some waffle thin? I want a waffle thin. You want a waffle thin. I think so. no... Maureen mentioned Mr. Creosote, so are you feeling with, must be familiar with Mr. Creosote? Python? Meaning of life? Oh, I didn't watch that. No, I, I never watched it. I never watched the Monty Python one. I never watched it. My brothers loved it. I never, I never, I could never get into Monty Python. I really couldn't. So I flatten that down and then let's get a glass. You want them waff if you want them waffle thin, <laughs> <laughs> you just want to use a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, less look at that, we've got quite a nice thin one there. Let's do a few of those ones, uh, make them. So you prefer a thinner one, do you? They just look that little bit better, don't they? A little bit thinner. All right, he's done it again, girls. He's done it again. <laughs> Jackie Adams wants them thicker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackie, you'll like these ones. <laughs> you'll like them ones because I think there's nothing better than some peppermint fondant encased in dark chocolate, and you can actually taste what you've got. So here we go. And all I want to do with that is I just, I just try and round it up to make it some kind of, of shape. That's what, that's one We've there. just got a variety of shapes. Just a variety of shapes. Just to show you can have them in a variety you of can shapes. anything you want to. I will just actually prove to you, um, I'm, I'm just going to get this very small rolling pin. I don't want to use the one that I'm using for my scones. Scones, scones. Here we go. Let's, let's just... Because somebody very nicely asked, let's see if we can roll it out. Mm. You can't... I suppose you could. Could you make them slightly uh, moister? Only, I, moist? what I'm thinking is only if you put a little bit more condensed of the, uh, the vegan yeah. condensed cream. But I don't know how it would affect the inside, I mean, the inside. I mean, yeah, I have rolled one out there. I suppose you could, you know, be really careful when you're cutting your shape out, but you could, you could cut some shapes out there. But I'd do some thicker ones. I'd, if you're going to roll it out, do it into a nice little block and get yourself some nice, uh, thicker shapes out. There we go. One last one. Put that one there. And I'll just say to Simon, can you put those in the freezer for me, please? Thank you. I'll try. I'll just gather this up here, put those back. Because now I want to do the, uh, the scones. I don't want any peppermint going into the scones. It will detract away from the, the flavour of my fruit. Put that there. There we go. And let's just give this... This is moving today for some reason. My board. Have you got a mat under it? Yeah, I think I've. I just. I think I've um, put it onto a bit of a wet surface there when I was really cleaning. There we go. So, um, Maureen says she's surprised you've stored these in the fridge. She'd have thought you put them in a dark place. Well, it's only because. 
the recipe that I got, I, you know, where I go on, um, just let me get that on there. Um, I go on the vegan websites, and that is where they said it was advisable to store in the fridge. So I was only going off what. Make sure I'm in the centre, and otherwise Simon will just go mad that I've gone off camera. <laughs> there we go. Are we all right there, Simon? Yes. It'll do. <laughs> It'll do. There we go. We're not moving now. Not moving. Nothing worse when you try to roll out. Or how try. long you put him in? How long we put him in the freezer? They're going to be in the freezer for a good half an hour. It doesn't matter. You could leave them an hour if you wanted to, but they'll be in there now while I'm putting um, my scones together, and then when the scones go in the fridge. I'll put the marzipan shapes together, put those in the freezer and bring the peppermint creams out and the scones will have had probably like 15-20 minutes in the fridge and then I can put those into the oven. But I am, for the scones now, I'm going to turn the oven and it, the oven temperature is 200 degrees C, gas mark 6, 400 degrees F. Where's the recipe, Karen? It's on the website, under vegan fruit scones. <laughs> can you point to it on the screen? It's there. Just there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to make sure my hands, uh, they smell a bit pepperminty, so just bear with me. I'm just going to rinse them under the hot tap. It smell lovely, it smells really fresh and clean. But no good when you're starting to do a scone. That's better. So you're going to make scones now? I am. already here we go so into the bowl I am actually putting where, where have I gone I'll just show the overhead to prove it's empty <laughs> it's empty completely empty <laughs> I've been soaking the 150 grams of mixed fruit I've been soaking that and I've decided to soak I soaked it in cold tea now you can soak it in orange juice, you could soak it, soak it in alcohol if you wanted to, if you want it's alcohol scones. But I, and, um, I have done it in orange juice before and it's nice, but I've also soaked it in fruit, in um, PG tips. And that's what I've got there. I've just got uh, some cold tea, enough to cover the fruit, and that's been soaking for about two hours. It just makes the raisins and the dried fruit a bit more plumper. So I've been soaking that and that will be drained off in a moment. Into my bowl, 500 grams of self-raising flour. Five hundred grams of self-raising flour. 150 grams of non-dairy, and I've used my stalk block. You can use the uh, flora plant butter if you want to, and that's going into there. And that, that's nice and hard, that, that's good, that's nice and hard, that one. So I'm also going to put into there my two heaped teaspoons, my two heaped teaspoons of, of using velvet vanilla natural flavoured icing sugar, two heaped teaspoons in there. And I also want to put in my baking powder, which is two level teaspoons of baking powder there we go that's gone in there and I am going to now rub this into nice gentle breadcrumbs now most scones take an egg well we're going to use the egg replacer which is going to be six grams of egg replacer mixed with 60 mils of water and you can buy this egg replacer from most supermarkets or you can actually go to holland and barrett as well and you can buy it from them but i got mine from um from the supermarket it's on the free from shelf Question for you, Karen. Do you know if Carol has bought the new metallic covers by Natalie Porter yet? Please. No, but I think that is. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. I don't know if there was talks yesterday. I wasn't privy to their conversations yesterday. But we will find out and I will ask for you. Uh, 
because is there any chance you could text Carol for me, Simon, and just remind her about prize draws? Oh, we prize draws today. Prize draws today. <laughs> when you said the word Carol, with prize draws. Prize draws. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will nip next door and, and um, check that out. Uh, a question from Sherry Hall. Yeah. Have you thought of using SNC flavour icing sugar rather than peppermint? Do you have a peppermint? No, icing sugar? I haven't got a peppermint icing sugar. But um, if you wanted to make orange creams, there's no yeah. reason why you couldn't actually use the. Uh, you could use the. the um, you could use the orange zest icing sugar if, if you want so to do maybe orange increase, creams. Maybe increase the. Condensed milk slightly. To yes, you don't have to. It's only two. Te it's only two teaspoons. So if, if anything, I'd just put an extra sort of uh, probably it's a dessert water. spoon or an extra bit of water in with it. Uh, two teaspoons of water maybe in with the. It says the peppermint essence is quite strong. We don't do a peppermint icing sugar, but if you wanted to do a lovely orange cream one, or if you wanted to do one of the other flavours, even if you wanted to do a chocolate one, you could do the Jaffa Twist ones. Remember, the Jaffa Twist ones are uh, chocolate in colour, as, as, as in chocolate milk shape. All the rest are white in colour. That's why I use, I use the uh, natural flavour. I use the velvet vanilla because I thought it went quite well with the peppermint essence. Which screen do you want? Uh, just leave it on this, on this one at the moment. I'm just, I'm just getting this into nice breadcrumbs. This is, this, this is the longest bit, isn't it, girls, when you're having to rub this down into breadcrumbs? Did you have to start with the spread being very chilled? My poor fingers after doing peppermint creams. There we go. That's doing nicely there. So as I said, the um it's going to be six gram of egg replacer that I'm going to put in my 60 mils of cold water and I'm also going to put four tablespoons of soya milk in there as well. The recipes are on the website for anybody who's only just joined us. I'm making vegan scones today and I'm also making some lovely little vegan chocolate treats that you can have on your table for anybody who has dietary requirements. about the big fluff debate no <laughs> no <laughs> I've been really busy this morning I'm sorry I've not so read Debbie Facebook Harvey's this. is asking um, she said there was a conversation last night about fluff and it says one one quantity on the, the recipe and a different one on the demo 40 Ooh. mil or 52 mil ah I thought I'd, yes on the demo it's because when I did it I did it with 52 mils and I wrote the recipe out for that and I actually honestly thought I'd changed the recipe. But then when I did it again at home and I did it again in the kitchen here, I found 40 mils made the fluff more stable and I thought, I am so sorry, I thought the recipe had been amended because I actually told somebody on the, on Facebook as well that I had cut it down to 40 mils and somebody said well I found 52 words I said well it's completely up to you what you use but I found the 40 mil one was a little bit better it just gave the fluff that little bit more stability whereas it was uh, more firmer going in with the and, I, and the uh, golden syrup was one and a half tablespoons so, so so is it that it says 52 on the demo I think that no it was 40 on, well I it was 40 on the demo right. on, it was 52 on the first demo and when I did it again it was 40 mils because as I was, you know, a play and I'm practicing, I found that just reducing the water by that 12 mils just made it like a little bit more stable. So, Lynn is saying the recipe on the whipping it up recipe says 40 mil. Good, that's um, right. So, that's correct then. That's correct. I, 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 I did alter it, yes, go with it. Yeah, the original, the original first demo did say 40 mils, but when I did it again, uh, the, the original first recipe said 52 mils and when I did it again I changed it to 40 and I thought I'd change the recipe and then I've done it on the demo I did it on the new demo I did it as 40 mils so if you've watched the old lives I'm really sorry but I just uh, amended the, the the golden syrup down to one and a half tablespoons and the water was reduced by 12 mils there we go look at that now we've got some lovely fine bread crumbs in there I'm going to put my six grams of egg replacer. That's wrong. Egg replacer. <laughs> she says. Not baking powder. No, I'm just thinking of it. Egg replacer. Here it is. 
It's free and easy, egg replacer. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, wheat-free, vegetarian, vegan, nut-free, soya-free. It's everything. Low fat, mustard-free, preservative-free. It's just free and easy of everything. Not an empty box. <laughs> <laughs> and there's our lovely white powder inside. So I've got the water there. That's 60 mils of water I've already weighed out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put in 6 grams. Be really careful. Because it suddenly shoots up, doesn't it? So that's my 6 grams there of egg replacer. I'm just going to get a small bit. I found if you whisk it better, it just makes it a bit nice and uh, frothy. I also want to get um, some cream cheese. Sieve to drain that. I've got to drain that fruit off. So here we go. I've got a spare bowl over there. So I've got my sieve to drain my fruit off into that bowl. I'm just going to whisk this egg replacer up. with four tablespoons of soya milk. I'm just going to put some milk into that clean glass that I was cutting out. There we go. A tablespoon, it's here, it's here. Here it is. So I've got a half tablespoon I'm going to put. So that's half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. There we go. And we're just going to that round so we start getting a dough and then I'm going to add the fruit in a moment so that's going all nice and sticky let's drain the fruit into my bowl so I've just drained you can tell I've just I've just drained the fruit into that bowl there and I'm just going to put the fruit into there And again, this is one you get your hands into in a moment as well. So scrape that down. to get it all together So wait, and it all gathers together really nice. And there we go, we've got a lovely. Go. Just want to make sure it's all moulded. I've got no dry flour or dry ingredients in there. It's all moulded together beautifully now. I've got a lovely dough ball, which is ready to roll. Here we go. So I'm going to try this because it's on the board. I'm going to on the on the famous pink board. I'm going to try and do it without any corn flour because it shouldn't stick on this lovely board like this. So it shouldn't stick. It should go. Sorry, read interruption. Grab the scales. <laughs> well, we didn't know you were interrupted until you said something. The <laughs> just went quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they? What are you looking for? Scales. They mean the ones I'm using here. Oh yeah, just just white bacon. <laughs> I don't need those though. You're Thank fine. You. <laughs> See, this is why I had to interrupt. <laughs> well, I'm it. It's going a little bit sticky there because it is the. Oh, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a bit of flour. 
So I thought of that. There we go. Just a tiny little bit of flour just on the top because this rolling pin was just starting to stick to the top. So here we go. Just a little bit of flour. Move it around. I've got quite a nice... I want a nice deep scone. I've decided we, we, we don't want to go tight with scones. We want some nice deep scones. I've got my parchment paper there. I've got my ring cutter, which I'm using the fifth one. We've got it's a six set in the cake star cutters. I'm not using the largest, I'm using the next one down. And I want you just go down. Now apparently when I did it last time, we'd said that one of the um, chefs had said it was good if you did the scones upside down, they rose better. And I think me and Simon tried it and we said there was no difference. But I will do a couple upside down for you. Upside down? What yeah, do you, you, you put them upside down on your baking tray and you bake them upside down. That, that's the right way up now. All right. Upside down. All right, okay. The other side's a bit flatter. Yeah, but it's supposed to rise better. But when me and you did it, when we was watching, when we when we, we we did the the test in here, and we said we didn't think there was much difference, so we're going to try it again, just because we're devils. so Simon can see stuff there. Of course I didn't get a big enough, I'm going to get my bigger tray out. Just keep squeezing all your dough back together and just keep re-rolling it out. Nothing better than a warm a warm scone with just some gorgeous butter on it. And you can even have your vegan friendly butter there. Because the uh, the the floral plant butter is really nice as well when you just have it on a sandwich or if you just have it on some toast and you've also got your your Vitalite you can use and you've got your flora plant uh, your um your stalk SB if you wanted to use that one. I'm just gonna get that round just so it's in the shape. And just put it inside and just just so that I can try and get the shape of all the rest of them. There we go. So will this be a crumbly scone? No, it's a lovely, it's a, as in... Because Nicky King says it, it, it will be a crumbly scone. It cut nice and it was, um, it was, a, it was, uh, we did them when we had that, uh, when we all had that high tea, when we did that high tea live on screen. Uh, we had them there as well, and they were they were beautiful. With the uh, I got I managed to get hold of some um, vegan. I did the vegan cream, which was the uh, Elm Lee plant cream, and I'd whipped that up. And we also had some jam with it as well. I'll just put right. These are now just going to go into the fridge for around about. They usually say thirty minutes, but I'm just going to put them in there for around about fifteen minutes, just so I can get them in the oven so you can see them. So I'll put those into the fridge now just to firm up. And then uh, we'll do something with the marzipan and we'll do something with the peppermint creams. These will be going in the oven, so I want you to see these before we finish the live. So they're not going into that long in the fridge. I haven't got any of his, so I made I'm afraid. So I'm just going to clean this bit up now. Where's my bowl? There it is. There we go. So we've got that bit there. Um, I have got... I've got the chocolate. Every time I can see that... On there, I'm going to turn that off. 
I want to just get a cloth to put the chocolate on. Here we go. Onto there. And that's melted down nice, but I want to cool it down a little bit. Just to put a few more pallets in. Just to cool it down. So then I'll get that nice shine to the chocolates as well. So I've used, I've got 500 grams of chocolate here, which the, the recipe for the peppermint creams does say around 340 grams, but I know that I'm dipping the marzipan as well, so that's why I've done 500 grams. But um, I'd go with a recipe, well, if you're just doing the peppermint creams, just go with the 340 grams. Now you can melt your chocolate in the microwave, as you know, on short 30 second blasts, but because I didn't want to be disappearing too much, I've had it on the stove on a bain-marie effect. And that's just starting to cool down now because the chocolate's just taking a little bit longer to melt down, which is good, which shows that the temperature's really coming down now on it. Tell you what, my arms have had a good workout today, haven't they? Yeah. Just put those a few in there. It doesn't matter if the gyms are all closed, <laughs> does it? Because that bowl's still quite hot, I'm just going to get another bowl just to tip it into so that I can. Um... So you're using the Calibert, is it the 811? I'm using the 811 recipe, yeah. yes. And Carol did say, I think that's all due in. I think it's due in the warehouse today, the eight, in fact all the chocolate's due in today. I think you can only get the big bags though, so we've got milk chocolate coming in and we've got the dark chocolate coming in as well, as well as the white. So all I've done is I've just transferred it out of this bowl, because with it being on the stove top for a while, the stainless steel bowl's gone quite warm and I want it to cool down. Put that over there. Right here. Look at that. Karen and chocolate. You know me and chocolate don't mix. You know we don't mix. Well, Jackie Adams is calling you Karen the Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you could have called me Karen the Snowman at 7 o'clock this morning in my kitchen. I was not happy at home. I reached in the cupboard to get something and the flour container fell out of the cupboard. The lid fell off and I was covered from head to foot <laughs> in flour as well as the kitchen top. You need photos, uh, Karen. No, because I was... It's good job nobody else was up in the house because I was... Do this thing with the chocolate. I was not. Go on, off you go. <laughs> I was not happy this morning. I, 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 it's the last thing you need when you're tired, you're ready for going to work, and a full tub of flour just tips off my head. Upstairs, get changed. Get your hair. I mean, my hair doesn't look that great, does it? No. <laughs> There's a way of covering your roots, girl, but not with flour. It doesn't work. Right, so I've stirred that round. So that's. Come on, nice come on, on, get your spoon up there, get, we need to see, no, no. You come want on. To, you want to throw chocolate everywhere, I don't yeah. think so. Back in the bowl. See, look at that. That's it, there, there we you go. look at that. Uh, you're not only rich hot. <laughs> <laughs> he goes higher, no, I'm, I'm not, I've, I've not got the same expressions as him ever. I've got the five o'clock shadow maybe. <laughs> <laughs> those here now these these have had they've not had quite probably half an hour either because Simon got them out very um very quickly there so they've not had quite half an hour but ah, well look at that they're coming out fine just press the button oops she says oh he doesn't do that does he, he doesn't throw his chocolates around does he hey, there we go we've got some nice peppermint cream they look like blossoms but how nice will they look in a little, you could even do those and put them in the little uh, the candy cases and you've got a little chocolate box full of peppermint creams then for people who love to just eat these. There we go, so we've got those there. I just want to get two, just want to get two spoons or a spoon and a fork better. Here we go. She said with only one little bit of piece of grease proof. So let's put that 
on there and bring that further down let's just bend that over there i'm going to bring it down now there we go move that across there move the bay marie out of the way just so sandra that my heart if i can you can see what's going on and i've got all my peppermint creams here and we're going to dip them into the chocolate Bring it up ever so carefully, she says. Just give it a nice shake. <laughs> oh, good grief. At least you might know it's covered in chocolate, don't we? <laughs> it's had a, a triple dunk. <laughs> so up. I'm going to do one at a time because I don't like to put all of them in the bowl. I like to just do one at a time so that I can uh, fish it out without breaking it. Because these chocolates were nice and cold, they've already started to start setting. So we'll get those back in the fridge so you can see those at the end. So once I've dipped these, I'll throw the scones in the oven and we'll do some um, marzipan. And then, because we'll do the marzipan whilst while the scones are cooking, so then at least I want you to see the scones cooked at the end. What I want to do to the scones, before I put them in the oven, I just want to glaze the top with a bit of um, soya milk, so we can get a nice shine to the top. these thick enough for you Jackie? Are these a good size for you? And what I did with any little um, tails of chocolate that's hanging on I just sort of broke it off before I put it into the candy case so they were still nice and round. There we go, so we've got those there so I'm just going to Put those in the fridge quickly, then we'll get on with those ones, isn't it? Jenny Stott says, scrape your fork on the top of the bowl before you put set the chocolate on the tray. That way it's less messy. Thank you. As you can tell, I, I'm not carrying the chalk at all. I'm just, I'm just there a, I'm yes. just a normal person who just loves chocolate and bacon. And to me, oh. and so shake it like that. Then we scrape the chocolate. Oh, you're such clever people, you. Debbie Hargreaves says, scones, Karen Griffiths. Yes, I'm going to get them out. When I've done this now, I'm going to get them out. I'm going to just put some uh, milk on the top to glaze them. And then they're, go they're going in the oven. And then we'll get on with some um, marzipan chocolate. And then when the marzipan chocolate's done, the scones will be ready. And we'll be all good to go. So I've got some nice thin ones here. I've got thicker ones. And once these set, these will be all there to show you everything at the end then. So who's on Hannah's class on Sunday? That's Me? maybe <laughs> yeah, Simon. You're you're on the class, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking like, forward to this one. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to uh, pearl the dragon. I'm a big fan of dragons. You are, are you? Oh well, there um, we go. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying that I'm a dragon? <laughs> Would you call me a dragon then? 
<laughs> you think like that, thinking why did I not think of that before? Let's <laughs> move that one out of the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks it looks amazing, doesn't it, Pearl the Dragon? It looks absolutely amazing class. Mm. I will be dipping in from home. I won't be watching the whole class, but I will be uh, dipping in from time to time, seeing what you lot are up to. Keeping my beady eye on y'all. But it's going to look a superb class, that. Yeah, Jackie and Nikki are doing it. I'll... I shall see you there on I Sunday. Shall, I shall see you there as well. I'll just keep, I'll, I'll bob in to say hello, it'll be great. Just to watch you all, it'll be great. And I can't wait to see. Uh, are there any of you doing it longer or are you just watching? Is everybody making Pearl on the day? Or are you just watching and then going to do it at a later date? Yeah, I'm just going. I'm just going to watch on the day. To be fair, you're watching three cameras, Simon, on the day, <laughs> so you're all right there. <laughs> I know my mum's got the class, and my mum said she's going to watch because I think my nephew's getting this for his uh, birthday cake next year because he loves dragons and he loves animals. So my mum's watching, and then she's going to be doing that next year. Is anybody else just watching? Here we go. Last one going in. Thanks for that top tip there. Is it Jackie? Um, is no, it, no, is it, um, I can't remember who. Janie Stock. Janie, thank you. Thanks for that top tip for me. There we go. So I've got. I've just got those there. So these are now going to go in the fridge to it. set. And let's get the scones out so we can give the scones a brush. Nikki King said, put the kettle on, Simon. Not sure why. <laughs> I thought you were asking me to put the kettle on. Then I thought, why? What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Nikki King says, put the kettle on, Karen. <laughs> it's coming It's coming out for a brew. <laughs> <laughs> if only, if only lockdown wasn't here, we could have all our mates in again having a brew in. Oh, I think she's so mad. Sunday. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just going to brush the top of the scones with some... Milk. Now, what you can also do as well if you wanted to, you could actually put a little bit of um, caster sugar or granulated sugar on the top to give them that crunchy effect if you wanted to. Or you can just leave them nice and plain. I think these scones go in the oven. I'm just going to check. I don't know if it was 12 minutes. Let me just check on my recipe there. Um, 12 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to set the timer at 12 minutes. Let's set that timer. Let's have a quick wipe down of milk and chocolate there we go can't get all the chocolate because I'm going to deal, deal with chocolate again in a moment so there we go so let's make some marzipan what could I call them marzipan bites I'm going to do them in this one now this is like the sphere moulds we've been getting for our chocolate bombs but this is the tiny one and this one is just a lovely yeah. Move the soya milk. Yeah, the must. <laughs> must yes. I must. Okay. The cameraman has spoken. We must. Like that. So this is like the sphere mold that we got for our chocolate bombs. Uh, remember, we've done them in a seven centimeter one, and I've done them in a five centimeter one. And then this is the small one. This is great. This is great for if you want to do little little bite-sized chalky pieces, especially if you're making little. You could make your little. Um, you could make little dome buttons in there for if you're doing your drip cakes or anything like that. And these are all available from Amazon, as we don't stock any of these silicone moulds online. I've got 200 grams of marzipan, which is all nice and sticky. I'm just going to give that a good mould, so it's all together. I mean, this is the best thing. These are just these marzipan chocolates can be knocked up in in no time. So you just want to get enough just to fill a little ball. I just want enough to fill 
the mould because I'm just going to dip these these mounds. I'm going to dip these in chocolate. So I just want enough to uh, go into the mould. She chases it across the counter there. Being a bit stingy with that one. Now I'm only going to put these ones in the freezer for probably unless I can get them. If I, once I've done these now, if I can get them out straight away, I'll dip them straight away. If not, I just use it. I put last night, I put them in the freezer just for, I think it was five minutes, just to help them firm up that little bit more so I could get them out okay and dip them straight into the chocolate. And then they just go onto a baking sheet again till they're set and then you can put them into your candy cases. So it's a, it's a, it's like a, a multi, I suppose it's larger than a Maltese ball. Definitely large than a Malteser. Again, these are great as well if you want to do these. And you could actually, uh, you could roll this out and you could cut shapes out. Cut your marzipan shapes out. You could do your Christmas stars. You could do your little, uh, your stockings, you know, your Christmas stockings. Um, little hats. You could do anything with these ones and you could cut your marzipan shapes out. Even if you wanted to, the Karen Davis mould, I think it's the um, the one that's got the fruit on it. It's, um, I can't think what it's called. It's got like the orange slices on it. It's got raspberries on it and a strawberry. It's a fruit, it, it's, a, it's a fruit one. So you, you all know on there which one it is. And that's brilliant for making, uh, you could put your fruits in there and you could make like your petit fours in if you wanted to. And you could colour them in the, uh, you could colour the marzipan and then you, if you wanted to spray paint them as well or dust them and you'd have like your petit fours. Marzipan petit fours, which is my, my brother absolutely adores those. He's buying my dad as well for Christmas. I mean, you've got them in the box, all the little uh, bananas and the uh, apples and look like strawberries. There we go. So this recipe isn't online as it's only marzipan done into a mould and then or any mould that you want or any shape that you want and then just dipping in your uh, vegan chocolate this is in the 811 recipe which is the nice the nice calibre one but if you've got any other vegan chocolate that you like it's just that's all it is so it's not really worth putting this recipe on as it's just marzipan dipped in in chocolate if you want to you could just leave those balls if you wanted to and just dip marzipan balls in there annoying me now though what that that mold is with the fruits on can anybody remember is it it's it, i don't know if it's like winter fruits well she did it she did it it was a she did like it was a like a caramel a, a caramelized orange uh, looking slice and there was all so um eleanor has just joined hello um, eleanor she's asking is the chocolate tempered pretty much so yes it is isn't it yes yeah. Um, as it was, I did it on the Bay Marie. I did it on the Bay Marie. And it's badly tempered, but I did it on the Bay Marie, and it was very warm. So I've put extra callots into it, so that I, uh, until the callots melted, and I got a nice tempered texture to it. So it's still melted there now. It's got a lovely shine to the chocolate. And this Calibo one, the eight one one recipe, is absolutely beautiful. Let me just get my other tray out. A lot of people saying they hate marzipan. Oh, I love marzipan. Me and Carol, we, we adore marzipan. So, like when Carol was doing her gorgeous uh, Christmas packet cake, but I will show you all again if you missed the live on Thursday, uh, on Wednesday. I'll show it you all again. It, I was eating, I was eating the off course that couldn't go anywhere because it was full of apricot jam. So me and Simon were like dipping in, weren't we, Simon? Yeah. I didn't used to like marzipan when I was a yeah. child. As you can see, they do come out. I've got a bit of a mould, but it's because I've used my finger to get it out there. I've got a bit of um, a bit of a 
a thumbprint there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand and just put those in the freezer for just about five, just so that we get that nice mound at the back rather than a little fingerprint coming through. It's not on the chocolate, but it's uh, on the marzipan. Simon, can I just pass you these? Debbie ideas? says, has anybody made their own marzipan? Have you made your own I marzipan? Have no, I haven't. You can make it with um, almonds, can't you? Ground almonds and all that. Never, I've never tried to make that. But so it's, just, it's just ground almonds and sugar, isn't it? Yeah. Be pretty good. So have you made your own, have you, Debbie? How was it? I don't know if she has. All oh, right. She's asking the question. <laughs> and I can't read the answer because I'm putting things in the freezer. <laughs> Let me just check the scones and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check on those um, those lovely peppermint creams that we did. Oh, <laughs> that's from the class yesterday. Don't think we need that. We don't. <laughs> so yeah. Lynn Woodward has made it in the past. Oh, ask her how easy it was. So, yes, give us some... Um, so I'll ask, I'll just ask how easy was it was. It easy, Lynn, doing that. So as you can see, when I pulled it, these are they're nearly dry. I mean, they are dry, but they're just um, they could do with a little bit more. But I just want to show you these yes, now. Yes, it's very easy to make. There's something I might look mm. at then, mm. especially because we make it without. We could make it with our natural uh, flavoured icing sugars. We could use any flavour we wanted to and have a flavoured marzipan. Yes, that's check that out. That's Even though something. I mean, you know, you're using it with the almonds and you'll get the almond taste too. But it's something we could look at. What, mm. what goes nicely with almonds? Flavour. Velvet vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just broke off a little bit of the chocolate. I'm just going to put these back in. So it... Debbie hasn't made it, but she just wondered if it tastes different. So yes, it would taste different if you used our flavoured ice cream sugars. But uh, maybe Lynn can answer. Does it taste different to the shop bought? Lynn, if you could give me a quick answer on that one, because we're intrigued. We're intrigued. No faff. So much better than shop made, says Sue Mary. Oh! And I like that word, Sue. No faff, that's what we like. We don't want we do. fat in this kitchen. How's the scones doing? Are they in the They've oven? got a couple minutes. They're, they're in the oven. I've got the timer on. Sam, could you pass me the... Um, um, a board, I tell you that pink one there that's right near your hand because then I can just use a few. That one that, that's Which right hand? there, right yeah. there, that one right near your hand. I'm, I'm to, I've just got where have they gone? I've just got a few little cases that I got off um, Amazon, it's just a little a petty four cases. They're too small to put, they're too small to do a mini muffin in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Now, if I wanted to, we could actually, with these being peppermint as well, we could um, we could glaze it. We could, I wonder if we could, we could glaze a couple green on the top. Just break off any little bits. Or what's better than peppermint creams at Christmas with a bit of, a bit of bling on them, maybe? Oh, look at that. I knew I'd not put enough things up. I've got three left there. Put those together. nice if you had a little stencil you could spray that yes do you have do we have a little one on that size no oh, okay no i'm trying to think um you could always make your you could always um make yourself like that's that like salmon said then you can make yourself a little stencil and you could a little, uh, star, or little star or even if you want to flakes. roll out a bit of fondant you could roll out a little bit of fondant or you could um even um try to think because it's because it's the vegan one, I would. Uh, you could roll out a bit of the uh, a bit of fondant to go on the top if you wanted to. But I'm just gonna just let's have a look at the spray these ones here with silver. Ooh. And then let's just try what gold looks nice. So that we know this is where we play on here, don't we? So let's have a oh look at them. So I've got peppermint creams. I've got them. I've got them gold, or I've got them silver. Now they look good. And then. 
there there so i've got those there like that just put those back into the fridge just uh, while i get my scones out in a minute and we sort the marzipan chocolate out then we're going to have a tray of goodies Put one minute on the scones let me just check on them but I don't want them to make sure that they're cooked in the centre so it did, wasn't quite firm enough on the bottom for me. Did we sell those cases? No, I got them from that well-known shopping set that I'm always oh, so using. So we have got some little cases because I've just seen, I've picked them up yesterday for both sides. Have we? Oh, brilliant! Wish I'd known. Is it the little Wilton ones? Mm, don't know. What do they look like? They've got pictures on. They've got pictures on? They've got something on them. Oh, They've magic. Got or something on them, but they're that size. Are they that side? Oh, great. So, Simon's put some photos. So, we're going to sell them cases. That's absolutely amazing. So, we'll be selling the cases to put your truffles and your sweets in. How good is that? So, you can get everything from one site. Just while I wait for Simon to come back, I'm going to get some of these. These ones, obviously, are a little bit too big to go into cases. So, we're just going to give have a bit of a rose gold on some. Oh, look at that. I'll spray those and then I'm going to put those onto this onto the stand in a moment. So we've got those. I think it's time to get the marzipan ones back out. Simon. <laughs> he didn't take to the hint. <laughs> Sorry guys, I was reading your comments. <laughs> I'll just get them from you. <laughs> oh, I do love teasing him, it's great, isn't it? So as you can see, oh yeah, a couple more minutes in the freezer and they've worked. So I'm just going to... very edge. I'm not sure if we have boxes that will take truffles, do we? But well, we have some long ones, we have the little ones. The macron we? boxes. Yeah. Yes. We do lovely macron boxes which will do the truffles. If you had them in the cases, they'd probably work better, wouldn't they? Yes. But you can, uh, you, I mean, because we put the macron, oops, well, have I got one there? Yep. I'm just getting them on the very edge there because I could have done with them probably another five, six minutes in the freezer, really. But they have come out fine, so I've got none left there. So let's get my, my fork ready again in round. Oh, you've learned that. I've learned. <laughs> oh, you've not learned that much. No. You, you know, that's it. And I know you like marzipan. You're not having any of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I know you like marzipan, especially after the, the class on the, the on Wednesday night when you were scoffing the marzipan. Oh, look at that. Just as you. What's that? Is that scones? That's my scones. <laughs> Just bear with me a second. The oven is calling me. Well, look at your chocolates. <laughs> Let me just stick on these. Oh, yes. I will just leave these here cooling a little minute while I just finish the chocolates off, just while they're cooling on there. You can get a sneak peek there. They're on top of the pan there because they were too hot to put anywhere. So I do hope you liked it. I know it's only been a simple live with some, some scones and some little chocolate treats. I do hope you've liked it. Yeah, just trying to show you some different ways that you can still have some nice sweet treats at Christmas and you could still gift these marzipan chocolates because some people do love marzipan and you can do them into all different shapes and sizes. 
and you could get a gorgeous little gift box, even the, uh, the little macaron boxes we do, and you could decorate them. We will be doing the prize draw shortly, so stay tuned. Don't go away. I'm wicked, aren't I? I'm doing it at the end, so you've all got to stay yeah. with me. I'm, I'm, I'm wicked, I know. I'm sorry. Remember to like and share. There'll be no Santa Claus going to me this year. Not into our groups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't share into our groups. <laughs> share into other people's groups. Yeah. Share into your knitting group. Share to your, to your, to your diet club. They'll appreciate a few marzipan chocolates. Don't preach to the converted. <laughs> and any leftover chocolate in my pot there I'm just going to let it go hard and then I'm going to put it, I'm going to crack it all the way from the sides of the uh, the pot and I'll uh, keep it and put it in a zip bag and I'll use it for next time and I will label it saying peppermint cream just in case there's a, a tinge there so then it'll be fine then for um, using next time. Because I do know, uh, we do like peppermint cream, we do love it. I mean, it just, it just smells chocolatey, but I'll just label it to say that I've done peppermint cream and marzipan, so that any taste that may be in there, which there's usually not with chocolate. Oops, a daisy. It's not even gone on. There we go. No, Carol loves these. Carol loves marzipan chocolate, so at least I know that she'll be having a nice uh, little little taste over the weekend when she's really busy. Well, she's doing comments, isn't she, on Sunday as well, so she's got some nice chocolate there for Sunday. Oh, you've got some chocolate over Sunday there as well, Sam, as well. Oh, I've got Yeah. Put that out of the way. Let's just try and put these in the fridge just for two ticks while I get everything else out. Look at that mess you made there. Oh dear. <laughs> what mess? Where? Too late. I've already seen it. <laughs> well, you girls know you can't deal with chocolate and you can't not get it over the pink board. I mean, you just know chocolate goes everywhere. I mean, usually I'm probably covered more than what I am now. It's only the hands. There we go. Look at that. It's absolutely fine. The board cleans up a treat. Could you pass me the wooden board, please, Sam, so I can put the scones on so they don't burn the um, they don't burn the pink the pink board. While I get the chocolates out right. of it, so yeah. while I get Which the chocolates one? out, the flat one, please, the uh, the uh, tree stump one. While I get the chocolates out, thank you very much. You're such a good egg, aren't you? Hey, so. Uh, Janie, the Sunday is the class with the cake illusionist, Hannah. Uh, she's doing the dragon. Pearl, so, Pearl the dragon. Pearl the dragon. There is still time to join that class, isn't there? There certainly is, yes. And it's one of those classes that you could watch watch on the day and then you can uh, buy all your uh, utensils and ingredients you need and you can do it another day. Quite a few people who have joined on to, to actually just watch the class on Sunday as they want to do the cake at a later date. So, yeah, you give more than... It's £30, more than enough time. I thought it was in a set with... Oh, it's, of course it is. It's £60. But with that £60 you pay for Pearl the Dragon, you get the cat and the dog class that was already been on. You get access to all three videos so you can make a dog, a cat and a dragon for £60. Here we go with some lovely scones and then I've just got my last little one which aren't quite dry so I'm actually going to have to leave them on this tray I'm afraid they're not going to go on my stand oh they're a little bit wet just 
just for photo purposes to show you. Let's just get a couple on there. As you know, they've only just gone in there, so there we go, that's it. I'm only putting that many on there. Right, so here we go. We've got lovely vegan fruit scones there, delicious. And to tell you the truth... Somebody's going to ask you to cut one, Karen. I was just about to say, I'm going to cut one to tell, I was going to say, to tell you the truth, the ones I baked upside down look like they have rose a little more than the other ones. So there could be something in that. And then we've got the lovely peppermint creams. I've got a shaped peppermint cream because I've used a little uh, mould for that and then I've used the one where you've used the bottom of the glass or the palm of your hand to make some peppermint cream discs and then we've got some lovely marzipan chocolate. So it's just rolls of marzipan put into a little mould or you can cut shapes and sizes whatever you want out, dip them in chocolate and you've got all your little treats there to go on your table. So let me get, they're very warm so I'm going to get a knife now to cut this scone in half. Here we go. They are warm, as you can tell by the board. So, like I did say though, there was nothing better, was there, than a warm. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? I'm going to go to the overhead there. To the overhead, it's very warm and it's lovely, and the steam is coming off that like something. That is beautiful. And I'm just going to cut that again. Mm -hmm. Let's just cut it one more time there. Mm. Very nice. Mm. Yep, I can vouch for them and say they are lovely. So if you'd like to um, go onto the website, all the recipes are on the website. I'm going to let those cool down a bit more. I'm going to put them onto a wire tray now to let them cool down a little bit more because they're just a bit too hot from this board. I don't want them to sweat. You're all right there, Karen. No, swallow a crumb. <coughs> they are lovely. But be even better with some butter on in a bit, you know. So I can put some, um, I can put some vegan plant butter on that. Uh, the flora plant butter or the Vitalite spread, and I've got a totally vegan scone there. And if I wanted to, I could go out and buy some Elmley plant cream, and I can have a cream tea in November. Excellent. So thank you so much for joining us, and it's time for me to do a few little prize draws now. Oh, it is, yes. I thought Simon that was forgot. nearly going to end then. Without... Simon nearly ended then, I mean, but I knew I had some prize draws to do. Yeah, I have the prize draws here. Thank you very much. Can't get the staff, can we? So don't go away. Right, so, these are all for... A £25 gift voucher to be spent on our website. You are lucky. I mean, we give so many gift vouchers away now on this website. So for the 13th of November, which was me making your vegan Cherry Bakewell cupcakes, well done, Julie Wallace. Yay! And Jerry Chu, on the 16th of November, doing her Christmas bear, Janice Fitton. My vegan, uh, sorry, no, my live on the 17th of November, which was that lovely baked Alaska made with the whipping it up. That was to die for. Well done, Peggy Gray. Um, Carol's Christmas Cracker Class, which was on Wednesday the 18th of November. Well done, Margaret Kirk. And lastly, for Cicely last night, when she did that beautiful Christmas bauble um, hanging cake, Jacqueline Penfold. So well done to Julie Wallace, Janice Fitton, Peggy Gray, Margaret Kirk, Jacqueline Penfold. You've all won a £25 gift voucher, which I'd like you to, the, on the bottom of the screen there is info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com. Please email in there and give them your name saying, hi, I'm Julie or Janice or Peggy or Margaret or Jacqueline and say, I've won um, a £25 gift voucher for sharing and then you'll have to say which live it was. So Julie, you shared Karen Griffiths' live the 13th of November. Janice, you shared Jerry's live the 16th of November. Peggy, you shared Karen Griffiths' live the 17th of November. 
Margaret Kirk shared Carol's Live, which was the 18th of November. And Jacqueline, you shared Cicely's Live, which was the 19th of November. Yesterday. Yesterday. And so, very well done. The girls in the office will get back to you on how to get your voucher. But you have to please email in to info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com and one of the girls in the office will get back to you. On that note, just let me try and pick up the Christmas cracker for the girls who haven't watched Carol's Live on Wednesday. It was superb. If I can lift it. I don't know how many kilos... Don't drop it. I don't know how many kilos is in this. But I'm just going to rest my hand on there. But look at that. That's what you call a cracker of a cake. It's huge, it's heavy, it's fruitcake encased in marzipan and lovely red, it's, po it's the uh, poppy red fondant. How good is that? So anybody who missed it, go onto YouTube and find Carol's Live for the 18th of November and it's the Christmas cracker cake. You will have so much fun watching it and learning how to do this. Carol has a very unique way, unique way of covering a cake. And it works. I've got to put this down. It's so heavy, that. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Sam, for doing the comments and multitasking and going in and out of the freezer for me. Simon's back with you on Sunday. I am. Uh, I will be watching from home, popping in and out all day, and Carol's with you on Sunday doing the comments for Hannah's class. Other than that, there's no live on Monday morning because it's Ollie the Chocks in on Monday, and you've still got plenty of time to join Ollie's class, which is £30, and he's doing ultimate Christmas truffles. Made, you can have an alcoholic or non alcoholic, and that is going to be a great class to do. And then I'll be back on, I don't know who's in Monday night. Me? Is it? No, I don't know who's in. Is it, if it's Carol or if it's... Oh, um, it's still Ollie. I, I, oh, it's Ollie. Ollie's in Monday night, yes. Ollie has to come back, doesn't he? And do a live for you all, girls. <laughs> for the ones who were in the class, Ollie's doing a live on Monday night. And then I'll be back Tuesday doing my live. I've got lots of... Uh, I've got some baking kits from work, which we sell, which are handy to have in the cupboard. I'm going to be showing you how to do all these baking kits we've got at work. That's on Tuesday. And then we're back with Carol's Buttercream Flowers Tuesday afternoon. So have a wonderful weekend, all of you, and thanks for joining me, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.